what you're about to experience is a free worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 173 of Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome. It's Tuesday, uh, January 11th. It's another 1-1. Uh, 1-1. One, one. One, one. One. Oh, or 0-1. Oh, one, one, one. Indeed. All this binary data is it's <laughs> wild. Hey, everybody in the chat room. Yes. Hello, Eric Kid. It has been insane getting ready tonight. It has indeed been insane. I was saying Robbie's insane, but, but in a good way. I'm... In a good way. No, I'm not actually crazy. It's just it was a crazy launch was, here because we have a very special guest. Hey, Hill. Surprise! I am here, live in the studio. Bet you didn't think you'd see me for a while, but like, guess what? I'm here. I like the shirt, by the way. Yes, yeah, Thank got you. Last week's... I am repping the pogo plug right now. Amazing. <laughs> That's last week's uniform. I'm behind on <laughs> times. Well, she wasn't here. So she's got her shirt. She's got her shirt. <laughs> hey, tonight we are going to be learning how to program our very own professional sounding drum beats. No, I'm not going to do it, beatboxing. Nope. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is that how we're going to do it? It's exactly it's how we're going to do it. It didn't sound professional, though. And it didn't look that good, and you should really wipe the spittle yeah, off I got your hand. <laughs> I'm a little bit wet now. <laughs> not, not even mentioning you know, all the spray that you got. Uh, we have a massive slew of viewer questions tonight. We've oh, got a lot of yes, viewer testimonials. Do. Seems our brand new website at category5.tv is attracting the masses, and uh, it is so great to have you there. And uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, please do check out category5.tv. Nice to see so many people joining us in the chat room. And uh, yeah, we get this puppy rolling. All right. Welcome to the show, 173. And of course, uh, if you are watching this after the fact, the show notes will expose you to links. Everything that we mention on the show is going to be outlined there at category5.tv, the show notes for episode number 173. There you go. Now, fellas, I've got lots to tell you about what's coming up in Fantastic. the show news-wise. Would you like to hear? Would love to. Uh, coming like to. up in the newsroom, you guys can anticipate hearing about the brand new Pogo Plug video brings on the fly instant HD video to the cloud. <coughs> the shifting North Pole has forced the Tampa airport to close a runway. <coughs> Nintendo's 3DS handheld gaming system can harm your young child. Mm. And the Sedega gaming service is shutting down, but refunds are available. So stick around for the latest from the Category 5 TV newsroom. She says Sedega, I say Cadega. Whichever tomato, it is. I've tomato. never said it. It really is. Tomato, tomato. You've never said it? You sound like you're just dying over there. Are you going to have to leave halfway through the show tonight? I'm, you know, maybe if maybe we had coffee. some Irish in my coffee. Mm. No, perhaps not. Perhaps not. Not tonight. Mm. You gonna make it? You do 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 so our, I You got probably, some questions? We have questions. Here's one I bet you don't have an answer for. And Hillary, if you'd like to be ready for uh, to to pull up the <laughs> viewer testimonials on our new site, of course, I'd love I to, certainly uh, will. Hear from some of those. This is from Gatorman. Hey, Gatorman. And Gatorman, who's on Ubuntu 10.04, Ubuntu, yes. Why does Planet Calypso not support Linux? Nice, short, sweet. I'm afraid for you to be talking to me. Talk to them, because it's a lot less risky for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, Planet Calypso is based on the CryEngine 2 uh, gaming engine, which is um, uh, it's part of the CryEngine line of, of uh, gaming engines. So that's from Far Cry. It's a Windows-based platform. I think it's DirectX only, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's fantastic as far as the graphics go and the gameplay. It's perfect for a massive multiplayer online game. And the decision was made by uh, Entropia Universe or First Planet Company when they migrated from the old engine over to um, the CryEngine 2 that, uh, that it was worth the sacrifice of other platforms, knowing that people who are really serious about the game uh, will not mind so much doing a, a, like a, a, a dual boot, for example. So really it's about, and Joth's reminding, it's called Mindark. First Planet Company is their fake name as far as it goes in the game. It's oh. all good. They've got so many company names. Entropia Universe, okay? That's what we're talking about. But essentially, uh, it's the engine that they use for the game. It's not compatible with Linux. And that is, you know, that's something that Entropia Universe uses, and it's been developed by another company. Cool? So there. Worth the dual boot? 
Okay. Yeah. We have time for more questions, I bet. I bet we do. Here's we one. Got, we got so many questions this week. We ought to okay, just we're go, just going to fly through them. This is from Jim Welcome in Idaho. Welcome to the Idaho. question extravaganza. <coughs> Down in potato country. Okay. Hi, Robbie. Do oh, you... Do you know an easy way to get TV out working? I have a GeForce FX 5500 with S Video out, NVIDIA drivers. Version 173.14.28, I tried editing my X configuration file with no luck and had to reload OS. I guess I'm not that savvy yet. I attach a copy of, um, oh, he's got his X configuration file to demonstrate. Um, P.S. I would like to watch my movies on my 36-inch JVC CRT. Thanks. I also would like to watch your movies on your 36-inch JVC CRT. Cause that'd be that takes up a lot of real estate. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> Both this way and that way. Um, yeah. You're contradicting yourself there, Jim. When you say you'd like an easy way, and then you're and then you're getting into the xorg.conf which is, is a bit more complicated. We can do it with the GUI, which is, as far as I'm concerned, the easy way. Uh, and the way to do that is in your um, system administration, because you're using an NVIDIA card, and you said that you're using the NVIDIA proprietary drivers, under administration, you're going to have a nice little button here called NVIDIA X Server Settings. If I click on that, the second option here on the menu is X Server Display Configuration, and you'll see that I only have the one monitor. You're going to see two different monitors there. So you'll be able to select your screen, right click, uh, you'll be able to enable, configure, uh, set it up with Twin View so that you'll be able to uh, basically take your movie and drag it onto another monitor. Essentially, it's the way that you'd want to do that. So the way that you'll see that, because you've got the two monitors, is something along these lines. Side by side, you're going to have your two displays. One is going to be your computer's display. The other one is going to be your TV, the S-Video output. And that should get you there. So that's called NVIDIA X Server Settings. And it's available under System Administration uh, in Ubuntu Linux when you have the proprietary uh, NVIDIA drivers installed on your Ubuntu system. All right. I hope that points you in the right direction. All right. Well, we have more. And this is from, I'm going to say, Amakai Robin. Hey, Amakai. Okay. Hello. I bought a UPS for my Ubuntu Lucid box. It connects to the computer via USB. Here is the relevant line from the uh, L sub output, bus 005, device 002, ID, and Agiler Inc. Okay, I can't find out how to configure and monitor the battery. I was hoping it would show up in Power Manager, like on my Asus Netbook, the extra tab for battery, but it only shows on the AC power and general tabs even after a reboot. How do I configure the Power Manager to show the battery tab? Mm. And by the way, don't ever go off the air. Thanks. Okay. I don't think that was a request. That was a... That was a command. Yes. Amakai. He mm -hmm. said thanks. We'll do our best. Okay. That's the plan, dude. Honestly. Okay. We don't ever go off the air. Um, first of all, LSUSB is uh, a Linux command that allows you to list all your USB devices. Ah. Right? Like LSUSB. Uh, so that's what that is. Um, what you're going to need is uh, NUT HAL drivers. Uh, and what that gives you is the um, basically USB support. I'm going to go into Synaptic Package Manager. <coughs> Just again to do this through the GUI. Keep it simple. System Administration, Synaptic Package Manager. And do a quick search here for NUT dash HAL. There we go. NUT HAL drivers, network UPS tools for the HAL interface. What the HAL interface means is that it's going to allow it to connect to, like you're saying, uh, directly to um, your existing uh, power monitoring uh, in Ubuntu. The uh, GNOME Power Manager is what it, what it is. Um, so that is going to allow you to 
use those USB uh, UPSs. Most of the time, if you install that, shouldn't shouldn't require a reboot or anything. Just if, if worst case, unplug it and replug in the uh, the USB device. Uh, but that should then be detected by GNOME Power Management. Uh, it should just come up. If there are any issues with that, um, as far as you know, it's not detecting for some reason. Sometimes the HAL version of the uh, the USB drivers for for NUT uh, can have some problems. Uh, so you can use the uh, terminal version as well um, just by installing NUT, but that's a little bit more complicated. So NUT dash HAL dash drivers and I'll post a couple links in the show notes for episode so number 173 to, uh, to the computer on NUT? No, is, HAL. Oh, HAL is uh, hardware access layer no, or something? Okay. Just... And NUT or NUT is network UPS tools. I'm such a nut. Mm hmm Okay. I hope that helps. I'm kind of looking here and keeping an eye on things, but I will post a couple links there for you uh, in, in the show notes for episode number 173. Cheers. You don't remember the computer on 2001? How? Yeah. Yeah, oh okay, yeah. Okay, that's, that's what I was mumbling about. Oh, okay. Okay. I took you literally. <laughs> Are you new? <laughs> okay. No, I am just noob. Okay. Hillary, how are you doing over there? Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah? Just, you know, lurking on the internet, monitoring the chat room, checking out the World Wide Web. On. Could we uh, take a look at some of the uh, viewer testimonials just to hear from yes. uh, some of the viewers who have been checking out the site this week? Most certainly. The only thing is, I don't know how far back we have read these we testimonials. We haven't read any from the new site, actually, as a matter Ooh, of fact. Ooh, well, all right. I will start with one from January 1st. Um, it's from Scott Evans from Australia. He writes to hey, us, Hi, Robbie, Happy Eric, and Hillary. I'm submitting this just in case I missed the first live show for 2011. The new website looks really cool, and I'm now caught up back on, on back episodes as we've had some friends visiting from Vancouver. So I plan to be more active this year within the Cat5 community. Keep up the great work, as it is surely appreciated. Thanks, Scott. That's awesome. Got another one here from Greg. Uh, hi, Robbie and all. Been a busy year for me, hey, so I miss some of the shows, but I do watch them when I get a chance. Robbie has shown me a lot of stuff through the years, and I am very thankful for that. I hope to start watching the show live again soon. Thank you very much from Greg. Got another one here from Howfield. Hi, Robbie, Eric, and all the crew. I have been watching Category 5 from the beginning, maybe Episode 2. I can only thank Robbie for the knowledge he shares, and always with an entertaining and courteous style. I have never seen Robbie annoyed, <laughs> except, for, oh, except perhaps when he burnt his head fishing and had to wear a cloth cap. Oh. The new site yeah. looks great, and again, many thanks. Cheers. Keep talking tech. <laughs> I got I some more. That. Should I keep going? Uh, yeah, maybe a couple couple more quick ones. Sure thing. I, I love to hear from the viewers, Hillary. We do. I mean, it's like it's it's our it's our food over here. Oh yeah, it's great to hear from people, and because everyone's from around the world too, right? So it's really cool. It keeps us all together and connected. Um, got one here from Troy from BC. Hey, Troy. Uh, hey, Robbie and gang. Thanks for another great year of content. Every single show, I learned something new about Ubuntu and technology in general. Keep up the good work and have a fantastic 2011. P.S. The new website is leaps and bounds better than the old one. Cheers. And I, I got two more. Can I keep going? <laughs> okay. I can go all night. Jeremy V. from Kentucky writes to us, Watch the show uh, off and on since 2009 uh, when I started playing with various USB Linux distros. Miro was one of the media packages that uh, rivaled iTunes. So while I'm still a PC guy, your show and my netbook with Mint usually show me something cool every time I watch. Great. And lastly, Dennis Finnegan from uh, the U.S. writes to us saying the new website is great. Really shows off your talents, Robbie. Thanks, Dennis. Wish I was less busy so I could spend a day here and watch the episodes I miss. But I'll just have to catch up when I can. As you really don't need the giveaways, but, uh, oh, you really don't need the giveaways, but it's nice to get a freebie every once in a while. Because of you, I installed Wooby on my Asus netbook, but I can't connect to my Wi-Fi yet. I may have to ask you, the master, for help. 
my daughter now runs Ubuntu after she couldn't get rid of a virus um, on her Windows uh, Vista PC. Mm -hmm. After three years of sitting on the floor, I finally installed my second monitor. Why Didn't were you sitting on the floor for three years? Yeah. Why? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, wait. It was the computer. <laughs> my, my apologies. I wasn't actually oh, paying attention to the sentence. Was there a misplaced monitor? <laughs> it's entirely possible. Um, anyways, he didn't realize it would be that simple. Uh, you might want to explain it in a show. Thank you for all your help, and Eric is a nice touch too. But you really need another great looking female to attract the stronger sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank may you. I introduce Hillary? Hi. Nice to have Hello. you here. <laughs> Welcome um, back, Hillary. Here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, and thank you, everyone, for your comments and your lovely shout-outs, because we really appreciate that. So drop us a line. Send us a testimonial. Yeah, you can do it uh, on our website, category5.tv, and just click on Interact, and you'll see the new testimonial system. And cool thing, I, I, I don't know if you noticed this, Hillary, but the new system actually uh, supports video testimonials. And Ooh. I really encourage our, uh, our viewers to give that a try. If you've got a webcam or a digital video camera that you can record yourself, that is cool. Uh, actually giving a testimonial, love to get a hold of that, oh. and uh, we'll certainly, you know, that gets posted on the website, but also it, uh, it will eventually be used uh, in promotional things like when we do our anniversary show and everything, I'd love to have some viewer testimonials. That so we make can. sure you wear pants. Well, that's kind of important. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's or kind of important. From the waist up. Speaking of <laughs> appreciative viewers, we had somebody stop in, uh, I guess about a week and a half ago. That's right. And uh, just blew my mind, and, and I just... I, I don't want to spend too much time on the product itself because we're going to do that down the road. But, okay. I, but I just want to give shouts out and and uh, just how how amazing was it that we, we actually had a viewer named Ian who uh, came came by the studio uh, a week and a half ago or so, and both Eric and, and myself were here. And I, I think he had like a prepared speech or something. It, it kind of felt like he was yeah. he, he wanted to just say you know thank you. For, for what you do with Category 5 and, and uh, you know, just, it was really, I was really touched by his, his gesture to say, you know, thanks for what you do. We're in our fourth season of Category 5 and we do this for free and, you know, sometimes there are, you know, we get donations and, and the occasional advertiser and stuff, so that's, that's really cool. But this, this guy showed up and, uh, and said, here, I'd like to give you this and presented me with, and, and literally presented me with, yeah. an iPod Touch 4G. Amazing. Yeah. Which is way cool. Very cool. And I've really been enjoy <laughs> enjoying it. And I'd like to, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, preparing to give the, you know, because I, I'm an open source believer. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm always wanting to promote the open source uh, software and, and uh, non-proprietary hardware. So my perspective on the iPod Touch, I think, is a little bit different than the average fanboy. Truth Perhaps. be told. I think it is. But I have to admit, I'm pleasantly impressed with the feature set and what I can do for free on the iPod Touch with the App Store and, and the amount of free apps that are available. Being able to VNC or RDP into my computer and control the camera angles, for example, that's something that, uh, that I've been testing. I thought with. you were just texting people. I text. <laughs> I've got the chat room, I've got I Twitter. I meant during the show. I've got email. Well, Absolutely. Wow. And it's fully internet connected through Wi-Fi. So it's uh, in all essences, and, and there are many devices like this, it's really like having a little pocket computer that you can take with you anywhere. You got as long as you've got Wi-Fi. A new little raincoat? Nice yeah, put a nice little, raincoat on. little jacket on it that's it's got the hard component and the soft component to protect it if, I, if it ever gets dropped or whatever. I've got the protective screen on it. I think that's the, the most important thing when you get a device like this is making sure that you have... Well. Sure. I actually uh, had a message from Ian. I won't, I won't read it verbatim. Oh, is he here? No, no, no. It was uh, earlier today. I, oh, yeah? I, I had a text. Uh, I hadn't heard from him in a few days. And I, okay. I said, what's up? And he said, well, <coughs> uh, his phone couldn't swim and it landed, oh, in, no. the, it Ian, landed in, a, in a certain... Well, it wasn't porcelain, but it was on a Greyhound. Oh, he, did, no. he, didn't go, oh, he did not go back in for it, so he has a new, new shiny phone. Brilliant. And, <laughs> yeah, but you said the protective thing. I don't know whether that would have really helped. It wouldn't help against, no, against no. water and stuff. It is certainly not <laughs> waterproof. Um, there are people asking, uh, especially Gadwill and, and things like that in the chat room, just wondering, you know, if this truly does have every app that you would ever need. And, and I think it's it's true. 
that it does. Wow. Is that a, is that a fart machine? Is that a whoopee cushion? It is. A virtual whoopee. That's, Don't ask people. <laughs> That's nice. It's got everything. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be taking a look at that from my perspective as somebody who uh, believes in open source very strongly. Um, and and <laughs> sir, I've been really enjoying it. I think it's really great. Those were baked beans, not uh, cool beans, <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> Indeed. But um, This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. Nice to have you here. Could be Cut. worse. There could be four of us. <laughs> <laughs> we just need well, another. Actually, there is John. Yeah, we John just need here. another mic for. Uh, John's us. being quiet, but. Yeah. Hey, John. There, there he is. He is. There he is. Back. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Okay. Well, this is from uh, Spidey Spence, and uh, enjoyed your video on YouTube regarding the pogo plug. I am enjoying it as well, though having some setting issues. The people at Pogo Plug feel it is a bug with their iPhone app. I'm able mm -hmm. to stream all MP4 media over wireless and 3G through their web-based page, but not the app. My upload speed is uh, point, 0 0.51 uh, megabits per second and download anywhere from 18 to 11 megabits per second. I am with Rogers and am running a WRT 54G router. Any suggestions on making sure it is not my router causing issues? Thanks a lot for your time. Mm. I have been searching for settings for this with no luck. Thanks again. Okay. Of course, the Spence. WRT 54G from uh, Linksys is a good router to to change the firmware if you'd like to. Uh, if you want to put DDWRT on that. That's an option. So, but we want to rule that out. Your question is, how can we rule out the router? Neat thing about the Pogo plug is that you can take that device anywhere in the world. You can take that to a family member's house that has high-speed internet, plug it into their router. You can take it to school. You can take it to uh, an internet cafe, anywhere at all. Plug it into the to the Ethernet, and boom, it's got you've got access to your to your router. So from your device, you know, take take that somewhere else. Okay. Plug it in, and then try it from your device, just to rule out your router. I think we'll that, spend that's some time at a friend's house. Way. Yeah, exactly. So, but the po pogo plug can be placed anywhere. So that's that's what's kind of neat about it. Um, and also, do check for any kind of rogue applications on your network. You say you've got quite a bit of upstream, uh, but if there is something running on one of your computers that's uh, for some reason taking that up, uh, then you can have some problems. So you might want to just. You know, shut down all your computers on your network at the same time, and just see if that uh, if that resolves it. And if it does, maybe you've got something like uh, you know a peer-to-peer -peer software or something that's running on one of those systems. Windows can sometimes get those um, as viruses, and they they're used to mass mail or you know to do those kinds of things, uh, and that takes a lot of bandwidth. So you may not know that it's happening. Shut down all your computers or unplug your computers. Just have the Pogo plug plugged into the router, and uh, and keep us informed. Let us know. Yes, let us know. We like that. Okay, here's another one. And this one's from Steve C. And this is hey, Steve. Uh, from the uh, the new site. Um, he's running XP slash 7. Okay. okay. Hi, I would like to take this opportunity to apologize for this lengthy email and also congratulate you on the new Category5.tv website. I'm currently head of the recording team at my local church. We create DVDs and CDs of the services at our church. It has been decided that we need to upgrade our computer system. We are currently running on Windows XP but wish to upgrade to Windows 7. This will require me to buy some RAM and upgrade uh, and an upgrade copy of Windows 7. Currently we use Adobe Audition to record audio, but after the upgrade we will lose this installation. I wish to convert to an open source program and was hoping you could provide some suggestions. Is Audacity, is Audacity best? I would be happy to install Ubuntu or Ubuntu Studio or other Linux uh, disk. Um, on the uh, system. However, I believe that this would disable our ability to print directly onto the CD face using our Canon PIXMA IP4200. Many thanks, Stephen. Hey, Stephen. Okay. A multifaceted question. 
not just mm -hmm. little, not just long questions, but it and it makes sense to you know we need the details in order to to be able to help you out. First things first, to answer your question, yes, Audacity is an excellent uh, open source uh, recording suite uh, for audio production and things like that. Um, but it's I think it's kind of a a reasonable learning curve. It's a little bit harder to use than some of the other applications that are out there, but it's it's reliable. It's good. It can have problems uh, <coughs> if if I've heard of on certain systems where it may have, you know, if you're running like a I don't know what version, but if there is a bug, it can be hard to recover from. Oh. But hopefully that wouldn't happen to you. Though, uh, whether or not you go with open source is really it's up to you, and I and I do. Uh, try to go with as much open source as I can, but there is a piece of audio production software that I prefer because it, it is it's not open source it's not free but it's it's cheap it's affordable and it works really really well it's extremely reliable I've never had trouble with it and it's under constant development by one guy wow. so it's made right here in Canada as a matter of fact I think it's well the guy's name is Chris but it's goldwave.com not to push you away from Audacity. Try Audacity if you're looking for open source, absolutely. But my personal preference, just because of ease of use and because it is affordable, is this application called Goldwave. It's a fantastic audio recorder slash editor. It records unlimited. It'll fill your hard drive with high quality recording. You've got everything that you need at your fingertips. It uses um, all different kinds of plugins. This is Windows only. It will work under Wine though if you do decide to go the Linux route. But as you were saying, uh, okay, and again, that's gold, <coughs> pardon me, goldwave.com, $49 for a lifetime license, and you get the updates and everything like that. And I do stand by it. I think it's, it's a great piece of software. You can usually, uh, there are Goldwave products you can download and try before you There is a free version too. that you can yeah. try, yeah. yeah. And you can keep using that uh, indefinitely. Um, and especially in, <coughs> pardon me, I think you're passing it around. Hey, oh, I don't boy. think so. Uh, with the free version, you can try. You could put that through a whole service, and uh, you're just recording one thing. So you would basically press record at the beginning of the uh, of the sermon, press stop at the end, save it as a wave file or an MP3 or whatever you want to do. Probably save it as a wave so you've got that master file that's lossless, and then compress down to an MP3 from there, uh, just by going file save as. And you can install Lame. All the instructions are on the website, but I'd be happy to walk you through it. But yes, there is a free version that will work just fine. Mm -hmm. But do support when you've got a piece of software like that. I like to support it. And like like I say, 49 bucks for an entire lifetime of updates. It's very good. Um, so that's that. Uh, next was your, could you do it on Linux? Looks like it. Here's a document that I found on a blog on uh, penguintutor.com. And this talks about, it's just basic information about how this user encountered the same issue where they're using Ubuntu Linux with the IP4200 from Canon and had trouble getting it to select the cor correct tray for uh -huh. printing directly on the disk surface on printable CDs. Um, what they did is they changed the printer driver to have the media size as a CD of 5 inches. Uh, media type is CD, uh, which you'll find in the advanced options, and media source is CD tray. So you need to change those yeah. things in your driver options when you're printing it from Ubuntu Linux. Otherwise, it's going to try to print out uh, on the paper tray as opposed to on the CD. I'll also post a link to that penguintutor.com blog uh, entry for you in the show notes for episode number 173 uh, so that you can follow through with that and actually read over what that user has found uh, with regards to using the IP4200 on Ubuntu Linux. And of course, if you go the, the Ubuntu route, then you're using open source software, you've got Audacity, you've got a slew of available audio recording applications uh, that you can use uh, on that computer and, and you've got that whole community of open source uh, people to, to back you up. Um, so definitely would be, a, I, I think that would be a good route to go as well. So let us know what, what you actually decide and uh, we'd love to hear from you, but I'll just kind of you know, give you as much information as I can to help you make that, uh, you know, the decision based on that. Good luck. Hope it works out. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. And over there... And I was looking at more questions here. Well, we've got... We'll do those off. Over there, we've got Hillary. How Hi, are you? Hi, I'm Hillary, and I'm ready to do the news. Fantastic. Dun-da-da-da. From the Category 5.TV newsroom... 
Cloud Engines Inc. announced the latest addition to the Pogo Plug product line at CES Thursday, the Pogo Plug Video. Further solidifying Pogo Plug's place as the multimedia server offering of choice. With the new version, a video encoding chip provides on the fly encoding, making your multimedia content available instantly and in true HD quality. No matter what device you're using, you'll now be able to watch and share your true HD video directly from your Pogo Plug video. The Pogo Plug video can be purchased for just $199, uh, US dollars, I believe. And for more details, you can visit cat5.tv slash pogoplug. The shifting of the Earth's magnetic north pole has forced Tampa Airport to close one of its runways to repaint its designation. Runway 18R slash 36L will be redesignated 19R slash 1L when it reopens on Thursday. The other runways will change over later this month. The magnetic north pole has been shifting towards Russia at a rate of 40 miles per year for the past decade. Hmm. As reported by BBC News, Nintendo is warning parents that their new 3DS handheld gaming device could harm children under 6 years old. According to the report, a statement on Nintendo's 3DS website warns consumers that there is a possibility that 3D images, which send different images to the left and right eye, could affect the development of vision in small children. While some would see this statement as a preemptive warning, Others see it as a red flag, feeling that Nintendo is making sure they can say, we told you so, when the lawsuits begin. Nintendo warns users that younger children should only play the 2D versions of the 3DS games. Trans Gaming is closing down the Sedega Gaming service, which brings Windows Gaming to the Linux platform. In a statement posted on their website Friday, it was revealed that the Sedega technology will continue to benefit the Linux gaming community in a new incarnation. It will become available as a tool set through the Game Tree Developer Program. The Sedega Gaming Service will stop functioning after February 28th, and users have uh, who have purchased a 6 or 12 month membership, which is still active, must email, email the following address, account at sedega, that's C-E-D-E-G-A dot com by Saturday at the latest, and a refund will be issued for your remaining time. While the updated Sedega engine under Game Tree will not be made available immediately, you may sign up now for your free Game Tree dev ID at GameTreeLinux.com. This will ensure that you get access to the latest and greatest Sedega technology moving forward. You can get these full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash, with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our wonderful, fabulous community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Planet Calypso. This massive multiplayer online game is available as a free download from cat5.tv slash calypso. Now, once you've got it downloaded and installed on your Windows computer, make sure you say hi. And there's something for everyone here on Planet Calypso, from hunting to mining, crafting, and just plain socializing and having fun with your friends. You can download it for free at cat5.tv slash calypso. If you're a Linux user like myself, of course, this makes it worth the dual boot. cat5.tv slash calypso. I'll see you on Planet Calypso. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. And tonight, we're going to learn how, how to give you a beat. We're going to give Eric a beat. All with right. Hydrogen. A beating? No. Okay. Synaptic Package Manager is how I'm going to do it in Ubuntu Linux. Very cool. And just do a search for Hydrogen. Now remember, I'm on Ubuntu. You might be on another Linux distro, and uh, you can get that out of you know your standard repositories. It should be in there. Or of course, uh, we'll be sharing the uh, website address with you as well at the end of the show. Hydrogen is a free drum machine slash oh. step sequencer, and yes, it does support MIDI input as well. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna check out some of the stuff that we can do with this. Which stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Absolutely. Sure does. 
Just so let's install this. It. Hydrogen, I'm going to select for installation. And as well, let's uh, now it's going to give us all the extra stuff that we need. Let's get hydrogen drum kits as well. And that's going to give us all those extra kicks and snares. And then I've hit apply. And we're going to go through and, uh, and let that install. Sounds good. Yeah. So when you're gigging, when you're doing a, you know, whatever show you're doing. When I, when you want to drop pubs, a beat. Not drinking beer and playing guitar? Just, yeah. Okay. And you want to drop a beat. If you had a laptop computer, for example, okay. you could sit down beforehand, program it in, all your beats, save them as the name of the song, and then when you go to play, you just select the one that you want to play, hit play, and you've got it exactly the way that you practiced it. Of course, this can be used for many other things as well. If you want to just jam and you don't have a drummer, perfect. Here it goes. Almost there. Sounds good to me. Yeah, you wait. I always bring the electric drummer with me even when I yeah. have, uh, have a real drummer, you know, just sort of <laughs> give him a little look and let him know what's here in the box. Just, yep, by the way. Try to behave. Don't mess around. Try to behave. Don't mess around. Drummers are the worst kind of breed, aren't they? I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to be quiet. In a rare display of me keeping my mouth shut. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and all our other drum fans out there. Okay, here we go. And they're probably thinking, hey, how can you show them how to use a sequencer? That's a sore spot. Well, it's all they good. do get sensitive now and then. Changes have been applied. So I'm going to close that and let it, let's, see, uh, let's see what this thing looks like. So here I am in Ubuntu Linux on my laptop. I'm going to go into sound and video. Now I've got the hydrogen drum machine. And there it is. And a sad looking little penguin with a set of drumsticks. Well, yeah. Okay. So here is our kit. And, and did you notice how quickly I got this? I did notice that. How quickly that it's set up. Quick. It's working. It's ready to go. We can start laying out those fat beats. Well, I was thinking maybe we could just get maybe a dotted quarter eighth half on the bass and we can do that too. And something on two and four on the snare and I mentioned that we have MIDI input, but we also have keyboard input. Oh, okay, there you go. So you'd have to find your way around the keyboard to find out where what's where. So you could just spell it out. Oh there we go. Why music didn't work out for me, people. <laughs> Single click will let you sample any of the samples. If you're not happy with the kit, look over here. Sound library. We've got all these system drum kits. Uh, the system drum kits are. It even has my old drummer in there. I've got a Roland TR626. Really? Got four from the, there you go. 626. There we yeah. go. Okay, so I'm going to right click on that one and go load. Now that's loaded the TR626. There it is. Here's our step sequencer, which is defaulted to eight, uh, eight steps, so four fourths time. And we can lay down a kick beat. This is my kick drum. Okay. I'm going to put that on the one. So now I hit space. Okay. We're running by default in 120 beats per minute. Okay. So far, so good. What do you got for us? Well, I was thinking, we, okay, well, what do you want? <laughs> so we're going to pick the snare that sounds best with this. That sounds kind of nice. Where do you want a rim? Well, we could do a, a little rim shot. Something punchy? Now, what kind of thing do we want to do? A bluegrassy thing? You could put it on the eighth nose. On the off eighth nose. Okay, that works. Let's start with that. I'm going to change my res to 16 so that I can add quarter notes. I'm going to get rid of that bass kick by single clicking again. Okay. You stopped playing. Oh, I just, I was watching. Oh. <laughs> Should we write a song, John? Okay. Uh, okay.
Okay. Oh, you want me to keep playing? So, yeah. So, okay. let's say we want to drop, let's put down a, a hi-hat. Okay. And, and you can play with this. This is the fun thing, is that you don't have to be a musician to play with something like a step sequencer. You can just have fun, hear it in your head, and, and just have a good time with it. Know that, uh, you know, if we're in four force time, we have to have that consistent kind of dun, 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 something along those lines. Find what kind of hat we'd like. Okay, so. Can we throw an open one there? Sure. So you see how that's working now? to show you a little bit more advanced of how you can work with that step sequencer. So that's the most basic incarnation of Hydrogen here, which is a free software yeah. available for your Linux desktop PC, your Linux laptop, and you can program any amount of uh, drum beats, basically, with all these kits that are included for free. So that, what we've done is we've created pattern one. So if we switch playback mode to song instead of pattern, we can now loop that. So let's say we want that beat to happen four times. Okay, you see how that's happening. So now we can trigger our next pattern for the next four, right? So let's change patterns here. Okay, so it may sound two. like a 626, but it's way easier to program. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so here, let's, let's change it up a little bit. So, you know, what I can actually do, I can layer why don't I layer these patterns on top of each other, okay? So now this is going to be like a ride symbol or something coming in after four. Right? So wherever you place it controls where that Okay? So if I play the song from the start you're going to hear that it's going to play my first beat, and then all of a sudden the ride is going to come in when this starts. Here it comes. Right? So that's a very, very basic incarnation of how nice. Hydrogen is able to work for you. Uh, but of course, being that there are so many different drum kits, there's a lot of opportunity for you to play around, uh, make some music. And uh, if you have any knowledge, like be it you know playing guitar or uh, even just even if you're just learning guitar, it's a fun way to you know put down a basic beat. Beats the heck out of the metronome. Yeah, it really does, eh? A little more fun. Yeah, yeah. and you can you can really uh, you can make it build because you know how the song is going to progress. So you can take those patterns and you can create new patterns for say the chorus, for example. So when and the your chorus three is about to start, roll and yeah, you can do it the end of the verse like. or... because as I've shown here, you can actually layer patterns yeah. on top of each other. So this doesn't have to be pattern one and then pattern two. It can be pattern one and then add pattern two. Right? Nice. So there's a lot to it that way. So that is hydrogen. Again, available free of charge. It is available in Synaptic Package Manager if you're an Ubuntu user. It's available in your repositories if you are on any flavor of Linux. I'm sure it's there. And uh, if not, we will actually have the, uh, well, I'll give you the link for it uh, right now. It's available for download for many different platforms, hydrogen-music.org. And there is an old, uh, basically like a beta version of a Windows installer as well. So if you're on Windows and you still want to give it a try, that might be an option for you with that version. So it's not really meant for the newer Windows versions, but well, it, uh, what I mean is, is that they oh. had created a Windows installer. Oh, okay. Their focus is more on Linux, so it's kind of fallen by the by the wayside, and that's oh, okay. older. But uh, but it's a functional system. It's really really cool. And then again, as I was saying, you could save your your beats as you go, and you'll uh, you'll be able to recall those again. Yeah, check it out. Hydrogen-music.org. This is Category Five Technology TV. Okay.
You'll find us online, <laughs> category5.tv. Nice to have you here. Hey, Hill. Howdy. I, you're here, but I, I am can't. here. There you are. I'm hidden behind in the secret corner <laughs> yeah. of the studio, but I am here. Eye contact. Yeah, well, it's good to see you. Thanks. Well, uh, we've got a couple minutes to squeeze in your questions. Category5.tv, you'll find us in the chat room, and we'd love to see you. And make sure you say hi. Oh, here's one from Jim. Hey, Jim. And Jim loves the show. Frustrated on the fact that I can't seem to get the show on my TiVo Series 3. Ah. I have looked on the internet hmm. and can't seem to find a workaround. Any ideas? Thank you, Jim. <coughs> TiVo requires us to apply for inclusion on their service. And we've gone through the process many times. And, and they have to actually approve you to be uh. a part of their distribution mechanism. So last I had checked, we were still pending approval on the TiVo. And I'll show you what I see. TiVo. Approval requested. <laughs> and that's literally all that I see. Yeah, so we heard you ask. Hang in there. The request is out. <laughs> TiVo knows we exist. Uh, but it's just, uh, it's wait for them to say, yeah, you know what, let's get this program on uh, on our device and you know sometimes it's sometimes it's difficult to get onto different devices uh, but uh, we do everything that we can to try to make sure that the show is accessible to you in the meantime of course we do have other mechanisms for you to be able to watch the show and I hope that you'll stick around and enjoy the show uh, however you're able to yeah indeed. thanks for watching stick around mm -hmm. we have another question and this one's from uh, Dennis Kelly hey Dennis hi Robbie is enemy territory Quake Wars free to download. Mm. Thanks. This was sent using his BlackBerry. Just thought I'd share that. That's random. <laughs> That's an interesting question because Enemy Territory traditionally was always free. Fantastic game. Uh, it was it was basically the the predecessor to or not uh, the successor. Pardon me to Wolfenstein. Ah, I remember that. Yeah. So Enemy Territory came along totally changed things as far as online multiplayer gaming and stuff. Um, you know, we're talking after uh, Unreal Tournament uh, Game of the Year edition, and, and we're talking, like, next step. And it was available for free. Then we find out that Enemy Territory was actually a trial run that they were using to create this ultimate online gaming experience with Quake Wars. So Quake Wars is a commercial application. Enemy Territory is still available free of charge. Uh -huh. So if you want the Quake Wars uh, game, that you have to pay for. If you'd like Enemy Territory, you can get it right off of their website. It's available as a free download. And it's available, of course, for Linux, and for Windows, and for Mac. And, uh, and it's a good game as well. It's, it's all designed to be uh, multiplayer, head-to-head. -head. What I'm going to do is, uh, let's call this one E.T. And there that's not extraterrestrial. No, enemy territory. Cat5.tv slash E.T. Now we'll actually give you the, uh, the free downloads of enemy territory. That's pretty cool. That is very I added cool. that button to Firefox today. Thinking, oh, it'd be good to be able to throw you URLs right live on the show. Yeah. So there you go. Cat5.tv slash ET will give you enemy territory, but not Quake Wars, because Quake Wars is indeed a commercial application. Hope you enjoy. Thanks, Dana. Okay. Here's another one from our forum. And this is from Larry. And Hey, Larry. Larry's running Ubuntu. Cool. Hello, Category 5 team. I'm in need of a storage solution. I require 10 terabyte of storage space that I can mount as one drive. I checked out the series on Unraid and I don't think it will satisfy my needs. From what I understand, you can't span all the drives into one large drive. Am I wrong? Do you have any ideas as to how I can accomplish this? I'm thinking of free NAS, but I haven't had a chance to look into it yet. Windows solutions are out of my price range. Regards, Larry. All right, Larry. Um, just a slight misunderstanding with regards to how Unraid works. Uh, and I stand by Unraid. I really 
really love my Unraid server. It's it's just he loves his Unraid. I really do. Server. It just runs. I don't have to think about it. But it is commercial. Free NAS is free. So depends on what you're looking for as far as that goes. Because there's that debate, right? Which one do you go with? But you saw Unraid. You know what it does. So how does it work with your 10 terabytes? So you build up that array to the point where it shows as a 10 terabyte capacity. Let me bring up my Unraid server here, and I'll, I'll show you how this works. That sounds like a pile of storage, doesn't it? Yeah. That's how well it works, is that I had to type my password three times because I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> okay. I'll go to on menu. So my Unraid server has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drives in it with a total of 3.19 terabytes. So you could get that up to 10 terabytes if you like by simply using bigger drives. I've used a lot of little drives. Is there a limit to the size on the drive you can use in there? No. So see, notice that I've used a bunch of cheap old drives that I've had laying around, a couple of 320 gigs. So my, my array is fairly small, 3.19 terabytes, which is actually really big. It's yeah. more than, you know, it's, it's lasted us this long and we've still got a lot of space left, three, uh, 156 gigs free. So uh, the way that it works is that now I create a user share to my Unraid box. And what it does is that share, now I mount it on my computer as a hard drive. So it shows up on my computer as a single hard drive, even though we know Unraid has multiple hard drives. So now, when you save anything to that drive, it's actually saving across multiple hard drives plus your parity disk. So you've got that redundancy as well. So while it isn't a single hard drive, it's not creating a volume of one drive. It, it's accessed to your computer as one drive or one Samba share essentially if that's the way you want to do it so for example if you were just going to create that one drive you could uh, but you may not want to do that you may find that it actually works better to split it up into different shares let's say it was just called Unraid so you create a share called Unraid and that is your one share on the entire Unraid server mount that to your <coughs> to your computers and that shows up as whatever drive you mount it as or whatever mount point you mount it as and anything you drop onto that goes on to whichever drive Unraid allocates it to go on to plus the parity. So, so it does work like one drive to you. So it's right. just not traditional Raid in, in the sense of how Raid actually creates like a volume. A little bit different. But works the same from the end user standpoint as far as that goes. So, so don't give up on Unraid. I think it's still a great, great solution for what you're looking for. Okay, and definitely free NAS is another uh, another good one. All right, cool. I have another question here from Amakai. Sure. Uh, Amakai. Hello, Robbie and friends. Oh. I guess that's uh, us, Hillary, John, Eric. Okay. Oh yeah. I need to install Ubuntu Lucid on a computer without internet access. I have the ISO on a DOK, and I had successfully used it as a live system on that machine. How do I perform the post-install updates, upgrades, and video driver, for instance, without internet access? Hmm. Is there a way to download an ISO image that contains up-to-the-minute, so to speak, updates that I can direct the newly installed Ubuntu to? Did you say noodly? <laughs> I did not say. <laughs> I have I'll no idea video. what I said. I want yeah, to see the closed captioning of whatever sure. it was I said. First though. of all, <laughs> just so you know, you're giving Gadget Wisdom Guru some ideas as he thinks that Robbie and Friends sounds like a great variety show. <laughs> so that's coming up next after this, uh, this episode of the show. Well, Hillary's just uh, putting on her tutu now. So <laughs> we'll be you better believe it. Sure. Okay, so there's, there's so many different ways you can do it. Apt on CD is, is something that's really cool for getting uh, apt like software, Debian packages that you want to be able to install through apt. Um, look up apt on CD. That's available in the repositories on Ubuntu. But that won't do anything for your drivers. But you know what drivers you need for your NVIDIA chipset and stuff. 
right? So yeah. you can download those from their website. You're not going to get the same ones as the Ubuntu system. Then there's the other option of install it as you want it to work on your computer, on another computer, or in a virtual machine. And then use Clonezilla and make a basically like a, an image, what you're calling an ISO, of that. <coughs> Pardon me. I never did system. get anywhere with Clonezilla after you broke my <laughs> CD. Oh, I broke my so CD. Let, let's say you installed Ubuntu into a virtual machine, and this is theoretical, but it, it should work without, you know, because you don't have internet. Do it on a computer that has internet. Install Ubuntu into a virtual machine. Set it up the way that you want it. Get all your updates. Get all your software that you need. It's not going to get your video drivers, remember, because it's a different video card. But you can download those from the proprietary website. Um, and then make an image using Clonezilla of that and image that back onto the actual native system. And that should work as well. There's different ways to do it. But apt on CD is the way to get the app stuff, get the, uh, get the downloads for the drivers that you need uh, on, uh, on like the NVIDIA website if it's an NVIDIA card, for example. Uh, so I hope that helps. It's a little bit of a unique, a unique scenario, but of course there's always the uh, you know it's always it's always a lot easier just to you know take the take the system somewhere that has internet, let it run all its updates, <coughs> get it set up to that point where it's operational with the internet, and then take it offline. That's the easiest way. So cool. That's really all the time we have tonight. <coughs> oh, pardon me. What have you done to me? Must be something in the room or something. I, I think so. I, yeah. I Sorry, gang. really doubt you, you caught this cough yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us I'll here. I'll be doing Category the show TV. myself next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Hillary, what are, you, uh, what are you doing in town? You just hanging out? Mm. I have escaped school temporarily. Mm. Um, no, my class is going on a field trip. I didn't know you've been on field trips in college, but um, oh. we are going to see some of Canada's lovely broadcasting studios later this week. So I'm just uh, I'm just cruising, and when in the neck of the woods, I always love to come to Cat Five. So I'm here. Yeah, thanks yes, for coming. No problem. It's so My great pleasure. to see you. Always nice to have you here. And we it gave us an opportunity to, to uh, give you your pogo plug shirt, which I think is I know, very I love it. Very important. Love See it. this vision of the class trip and the teacher here having a rope and all the kids holding on to it and following behind the, the prof, but not like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope everybody's had a good night. Uh, do get your questions into us live at category5.tv. Uh, you can also email us off our website. Get involved in the forum, too. We've got the great new community forum on category5.tv. We'd love to get you involved in that. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, we're seeing a lot more community involvement, which is a big part of what uh, what this upgrade on the website was all about getting uh, getting more involved with the, with our community and getting our community more involved with each other and I think that's starting to happen so very excited about that everybody have a good night lab fan cheers GWG Gadwill Scorpio 55 join us in the chat room nice to see Scott Alan Pope Corey can we write a song oh we really need to. I was just thinking, song. we should yeah. do like a song, a real song. A real and song. And record it. Okay. Downloadable from our website only. We're going to do that. I think that would be a great the idea. Cat okay. song. The mm -hmm. Cat 5 song. Yep. The Cat 5 theme song. You watch for it, people. <laughs> <laughs> with that, we will leave you with this. Have a great night. Bye bye. Have a <laughs> Take great care, everybody. Week. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. And speaking of cake, I have cake. I'm fine for cake, Mrs. Doyle. Are you sure, Father? <laughs> There's cocaine in it. There's what? Oh, no, not cocaine. What am I on about? <laughs> no, I meant, um, what you call them? Raisins. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh, I won't, thanks.